Um, walk me through a process. Okay, so like, let's say your a client is interested. We were in the sales process. Um, you've done the proposal. They've agreed to that. Like, from that point to execution delivery, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Just thirty thousand of you. Yeah. Well, when we're doing the proposal part of it, we do make sure that in the conversation they have a good sense of um, how much it's going to cost and how long it might take. So we already establish that before we start breaking down the project. So um, for instance, like if you came to me and you're like, I want this one minute long uh, video, it's going to premiere at a video game conference and um, it's gonna require a lot of 3D animation. From there, me and my producer, me by myself, I would break down the project and say, you know what, this is about two to three months of a project. I'm, I'm looking at it in these big sprints. Let's say it's three, three months. And those are each three phases. I would start with something like an animatic and a storyboard where we're just trying to figure out uh, timing, general composition, and the general flow of the thing. Once that's approved, then we approve phase one and there's no going back. Then that's the foundation that we build and now we're standing up the house, right? So the second part is animation. So now we're taking each of the shots and actually building them to fruition so they start to, to look um, a lot more detailed uh, based off of everything, the skeleton that we developed in phase one. Once that starts getting fleshed out, we get approvals and refinement along the way. And then phase two is locked. It's like wow. all the timing is there, all of the general blocking of the animation is good, everybody's good, done. It's locked, we're not going back to that. So that's a safety guard to not go back to the drawing board because phase one's already, okay, and that's how you account for overages and all that kind of stuff. And, the, and that whole process is understood during the proposal before they even pay a deposit. Correct, gotcha. correct. Yeah, so we outline all of the major phases uh, and major milestones of the project, accounting for any um, particular dates that they have in mind. Let's say if they need all the stakeholders to see it at a particular date or they need to do rehearsals for something, whatever that is, we make sure that those are accounted for so we have this big um, overview of the entire project. We don't get so granular into daily postings and all that stuff like that just, it doesn't make sense for them to see. It's like from a high level, here are the three big phases. Mm -hmm. And then we know that if we need to go back on something, we're gonna incur overages. So at every point, uh, every time we post, every time we advance in the project, we try and like m iterate and make it much, much more narrow in terms of how much we're refining the project. So we're not doing this for our process. Right. It's just like, you know, we're going like this and it gets very, very narrow until we get to delivery. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and so, so each of those phases and determining how long those phases are. So basically, it seems like all of this, everything is determined at the proposal phase. So you've already got, and I think one of the reasons why this is probably an issue for people is because like, they don't know what to charge the clients, right? And so it sounds like we already have the budget in mind. So we're working with this particular budget in this particular frame, uh, time frame. So now that that's set, right. how do we break those down? Right, so you're saying that the, the budget is set and then the t time frame is set. Yeah. Then what we do is we back out from the delivery and then take the steps, okay, to deliver, uh, let's say if we're d delivering a brand identity, what are the things that go into there? So we look at all the deliverables and then we break those things going backwards, trying to figure out all the steps. Let's say there, we need two rounds of revision for each deliverable. So we account for like a week or two for each of those things. And then another week, so it's like, okay, now we have our two rounds. We get back to the beginning where we're like sketching stuff out or ideating, then do another week behind that and we're doing stylescapes. And then we go all the way back to, okay, well, here's the project start. And sometimes what we'll do, uh, depending on uh, the limit of the budget or time, we're going to scale and squeeze or overlap things. Ideally, everything's kind of spread out a bit so that everyone has enough time to look at things, reflect, and then give meaningful feedback. So those are a little bit more ideal. There's a little bit more space in between all of the big steps so that everybody feels comfortable that they've made good decisions along the way. Of course, that's not always the case, and we have to compress a lot of timelines. Or sometimes there's a limited budget, and we just we can't afford to keep a team on it for three months. Just because the client's schedule is three months doesn't mean we have to be working on it for three months. If we look at their schedule and our budget allotted for this, it, they could only probably afford us for three weeks. So then in that three weeks, we back out closer to their, um, their delivery date, and it's like, okay, what can we do in three weeks that's going to help them get there? deliverable. So just because they have an yeah, extended yeah. timeline doesn't mean we're putting the whole team on it for three months. It's, it's relative to uh, the scale of the project, the scope, the timeline, and the budget allotted.
Do you have this kind of like templated out for different types of projects? So like for motion graphics, we know that this is pretty much the project management system. And for a web design project for brand identity, it's like templated out and you just kind of change dates and deliverables? Yes. Well, um, not really. It's A lot of it is up here. What we do provide in the course is example breakdowns of those three things, actually. Oh, really? Web project, branding project, and then a motion project. So we give examples of what one big project would look like, broken down into phases, broken down into tasks, and then like how we would assign those uh, on a weekly basis. Yeah, and then how that looks visually in a proposal to the client might be different than what your team is looking at in here. Okay.